Hey, and welcome to another episode of I Know Jax. I'm Joe Talentino. Every week, I do a new show to help you find cool local places to go with friends and family. Now, many of our local restaurants don't have big budgets, so they look to people like us to spread the word. Now, in today's episode, we're going to visit a Thai restaurant, and we're going to talk about craft beer, wine, and much more. The reason I started I Know Jack's over six years ago was really to help showcase our local restaurants and craft breweries. There's a lot of local talent on the First Coast, as I'm sure you know. First, we're going to explore Thai food. Now, Thai food for me was love at first bite. Today I want to introduce you guys to one of my favorite places. It's a hidden gem called Simply Tasty Thai on Mayport Road. So I'm hanging out in the kitchen with Nancy and she's going to show me all our secrets for making Pad Thai, right? Yes. So tell me how we make this. This is the rice noodle. Okay. We use the smallest size. The uh, jumbo shrimp, mayport shrimp. Of course, mayport shrimp. Where yes. else? Uh -huh. <laughs> Have egg and uh, fried tofu. Fried to tofu. Bean sprout. Bean sprouts. Garlic chai. Garlic chai, not spring yes. onions. Not the spring onion. A lot of uh, a lot of people are trying to use the spring onion instead of garlic chai, but the authentic way, it got to be garlic, garlic chai. chai. Yes. Gotcha. Uh huh. Cool. And this is the the pad thai sauce. Okay. Of course, our secret, but I'm gonna tell you today. Okay. What is it? It's got tamarind, tamarind, plum sauce, plum sauce, and fish sauce. Fish sauce and fish sauce is like anchovies, anchovies, and, and, liquid. Yeah, and liquid. That gives you the salt to go That's right. against the sweet of the plum sauce. That's right. Cool. Uh, we cook meat first. Nancy pushes the shrimp over to the side and adds the egg. Now, what's the idea with the wok? The, the high sides are so that it's different heats? Yes, it's different heat. So you, so you see the, the heat go that way. Gotcha. So that one is hot. That's why this it's hot. This one is that not side. that hot. Yes. Got gotcha. you. Next, the noodles and the cooked tofu go in. Now the noodles soft. A lot of place, they have the trick. They will soft the noodle by steam the noodle in first. In the water first, right. yeah. But not yeah. for us. No, nah, yeah. you're doing it the traditional way. Nancy adds the pad thai sauce. She lowers the heat a bit. Smell good, right? Smells great. Now, when I talk to my friends about Thai food, they go, I don't go to Thai restaurants because it's too, the food's too hot. But you can make it in any, any way you want to, right? It doesn't have to be hot. Thai food is very tasty food, yeah. so the people think it's hot, but actually... It's just flavorful, you know, right? Yeah, you can always ask for mine, medium or hot, you right. don't have to have the... Right, you know. but I like mine hot. Now the noodles are done, time for bean sprouts. You're gonna put the chili powder. That's the hot stuff, that's what I like. That's medium. Medium, okay. She adds ground peanuts. The pad thai is done and ready to be plated. Man, I'm ready to eat. Nancy was nice enough to make us the great food in the kitchen, and you might recognize we have the pad thai and the chu chi. We've also added roti bread, which is, goes really well with curry. We have forget-me-not, which is like a uh, spring roll with cucumbers, crispy duck, which is pretty cool, and tom yum, which is a great soup, and then sweet mango, which is a great dessert. And then, since I'm a southerner, I like sweet tea, and we're doing Thai tea, and Thai tea is made a little bit differently. It's really, really sweet tea, and then they add condensed milk on top. And thank you, Buki. <laughs> that was really, it's really good. It's a great way to balance out all the flavors. I look forward to seeing you guys at Simply Tasty Thai. Didn't that look delicious? 
I love learning about different cultures and tasting different types of food. I'm adventurous that way, I guess. Now, I don't travel as much as I'd like, but I do my best to try different kinds of food right here in Jacksonville. And I would say that the food scene has grown so much since I started the show. Now, but when it comes to growth, I don't think anything comes close to the explosive growth of craft beer. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. I just wanted to let you know that I'm now sending out The Insider every Tuesday. You'll get tips and ideas for cool things to do, plus you'll find out what I'm up to and where we're filming next, that kind of stuff. You can subscribe to The Insider on my website at iknowjax.com. Hey, and welcome to What's Brewing in Jax. Every week I take a look at what's happening in the craft beer scene in Jacksonville. I'm at Really Good Beer Stop on 3rd Street in Jacks Beach, and today I'm having a hyperbolic IPA from Copper Tail Brewing in Tampa. Now, as you know, I like drinking craft beer. There are so many different styles of beer and so many different tastes to explore, but despite all my beer drinking experience, I'm far from what I'd call a craft beer expert. That's why this event caught my eye. It's called Intro to Hops at Dahlia's Poorhouse. Now, I love Dahlia's Poorhouse, which is right there in the King Street District. We actually had one of our first I Know Jack's birthday parties at Dahlia's. That's how much I like the place. But back to the class. It's called Intro to Hops, and it's a hands-on learning experience that will take your beer knowledge to the next level. <laughs> this class is done together with Rory, the brewer from Atlantic Beach Brewing Company. Tickets are available online at Dahlia's, but act fast. This class is limited to 25 people. Intro to Hops is on Wednesday, April 11th, starting at 7. Now, I can never turn down a good stout, and Green Room Brewing has some of the best in town. On Thursday, they're tapping a beer that I can't wait to taste. It's called Hawking, and it's a nitro milk stout aged on raspberries and coffee. Now, doesn't that sound good? <laughs> I'll have to be swinging by there for a pint or two of that one. That's on Thursday, April 12th. It's great to see that our breweries in town are collaborating a lot, and this weekend is a big weekend for Intuition and Southern Swells. And for those of you who are big fans of IPAs, this is an interesting collaboration. The first collab beer which was brewed in Intuition is a Belgian-style New England IPA called Nor'easter. This is a double IPA that utilizes all the ingredients found in I-10 and Karate in the Garage. Now the second brewed at Southern Swells is a double IPA called Interstate Kung Fu Battle. Now, Nor'easter will be available in a limited run of cans during the launch event in the tap room at Intuition. They will also have Kung Fu Battle on draft. Then on Saturday, it's Southern Swells' turn to host an event for the release of the Kung Fu Battle cans and Southern Swells' new IPA, Let's Do Lemon Drops. Two days, at least, at least two beers in two breweries and that's not too much. <laughs> These beers are released Friday, April 13th at Intuition and Saturday, April 14th at Southern Swells. Now I love craft beer, but I also love fresh seafood. And this Saturday, Really Good Beer Stop is hosting a super cool event. It's an oyster and beer pairing right here at Really Good Beer Stop. See, my good friend Johnny Pop Brown, master oyster shucker from the fish company, is going to be out here serving up fresh oysters. Johnny is without doubt one of the fastest, bestest oyster shuckers in town, and for 15 bucks, you get a half a dozen oysters and a flight of beers. Two stouts, one gosa, perfectly selected to complement the oysters. And there are no tickets required. Just show up. I'm going to swing by too, so if you see me, make sure to come up and say hi. The oyster and beer pairing takes place at Really Good Beer Stop from 4 to 9 p.m. on Saturday, April 14th. Sunday is the day when I like to chill after a long week, and Hyperion Brewing Company in Springfield has a Sunday event called Hyperion and Chill. Now this Sunday, the event is an autism awareness event, and Very Good Farms Food Truck is going to be there from 1 to 3 p.m. Now if you haven't had their food before, you should go try it. It's really tasty. You see, Very Good Farms is a farm to truck vocational training program for tra transition students and postgraduates from the North Florida School of Special Education. A dollar from every pint sold on Sunday will go to the Heal Foundation here in Jacksonville, Florida to help them continue serving the autism community. Hyperion and Chill Autism Awareness is at Hyperion Brewing Company on Sunday, April 15th. 
Well, that's it for this time. Now, if you want to try a hyperbolic IPA from Copper Tail Brewing, you need to hurry here because the really good beer stop, they rotate their 20 beers on tap all the time so that there's always something new. Cheers. Jacksonville Beach's ultimate craft beer and growler store. Just a few weeks ago, I was filming with Garrett Lee from The Fish Company in their kitchen. He made me their famous Cajun shrimp linguine. It's awesome. Now this week, I filmed even more seafood. I was actually out at Singleton Seafood in Mayport and did a story there. You'll be able to catch that one right here on I Know Jack soon. You see, I'm doing my best to promote our local flavors on I Know Jack's. You see, because many of the smaller restaurants don't have big budgets for marketing, so they rely on us to help spread the word. So if you like the I Know Jack's TV show, you need to take a look at what we're doing online as well. You see, we're doing a weekly Facebook live show from the Atlantic Beach Brewing Company. Plus, I also upload, well, let's just say a lot of other stories. You can check all that out on my Facebook page for I Know Jack's. Just go to Facebook and search I Know Jack's. And when you get to the page, well, make sure to like it. And heck, why not invite your friends to do the same? Now, I'm a big fan of craft beer, but every now and then I'll venture out and have a cocktail or three or a glass of wine. And wine, that's what we're gonna talk about next. Today I'm with Chris Chislett, the wine guy, and we're gonna talk about I have no idea what we're doing. No, no, I, I know you didn't. <laughs> you, you set me up. Well, I'm, no, I'm, 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 that's no, not a problem, you know. We just, just rock yeah. and roll, baby. Yeah, all right. Merlot versus Cabernet. Ding, ding. Yeah, ding. Merlot versus Cabernet. Right, so what cool. are the differences? Merlot versus Cabernet. They're both red. Um, yeah, I well got done. that one. And that's it. Score one. See you next week. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, no, it's not so much about these wines. I just I had these wines. Uh, They're both from the same vineyard, which is Yeah, cool. so these are, um, we've got the Wente uh, Merlot, the Wente uh, Cabernet, both from uh, Livermore, which is actually just, just uh, east of uh, San Francisco. California. Oh, okay. Livermore. Of, yeah, I've got a. Yeah. Sounds like English. Yeah, I thought with you saying, I don't know. It Livermore. sounds it could be. No, I can't. I, can you Americanize that? No. No. <laughs> well, don't even try them. So Very it's good. a California wine. It awesome. is. So, but it's more about the whole Merlot versus Cabernet. This is the same winery, same vineyards. Um, they're just making, you know, the wine Merlot Cabernet. So we want to kind of taste, you know, what's the difference between what's the, okay, okay. Merlot and Cabernet? A lot of people get confused. It's like both red, they're I'm both already fairly confused. full body. I'm always confused when you're here. <laughs> I know. You know? It's, it's um, just my influence. Yeah, no, you just confused the hell out of me. So, yeah, let's 